the number of ambulances there shows you obviously the concern uh, for the well being of each of these individual hostages being released right now. There's Rafa. Hang on. There's a little girl. These are live pictures. This is the first time we're seeing that right now. And for the first time, we just saw a little girl getting out of one of those ambulances and walking into a building there. It could have been that that was one of the Israeli hostages, the young children, released not long ago as part of this deal. Yeah, John, as we're watching all of this play out and waiting for the identities of these hostages to be confirmed by Israel, which they says they'll they say that they'll do once they're safely back in Israel. Though we're watching several of them uh, get out of these emergency vehicles, we're also learning more about who they are. And I'm told by an Israeli source that most of these hostages, not all of them, we don't know that exactly, but a majority of the hostages that have been released just now by Hamas from Gaza are from kibbutz near Oz. And on October 7th, that was a kibbutz that saw a lot of devastation in the October 7th attack. I believe it was estimated that a quarter of the population of the several hundred people who lived there were either murdered or kidnapped into Gaza. And they saw, I mean, it was the kibbutz where they burned basically the kindergarten to the ground. They went into homes. You heard, you know, the testaments from the people who did survive that attack about just how devastating it was that day and how it saw some of the worst violence on October 7th. John, we're now seeing, as we're hearing, that they are from kibbutz near Oz, the majority of these hostages. Right now, we are watching a, a line of people now boarding. They'd gone inside after getting out, now getting onto a bus. You can see an elderly woman. She is stepping into that white bus with assistance right here. And you see a line of people behind her, some men, another woman. We believe we saw a child at the beginning of the line. It's unclear if it was the same child that we saw earlier. We know that we you have heard from Egyptian sources that several of the hostages who are being released today, not just those 13 Israeli hostages, also several Thai nationals as well who were kidnapped by Hamas on that day. And they appear to be boarding this bus right in front of us, John. Yeah, uh, so again, the question Israeli is what's hostages. next is. Yeah, 13 Israeli yeah. hostages, 10 Thai hostages, one Filipino hostage. We saw a number of them, but by no means all boarding that bus right there. Presumably some are also receiving medical care, might be in the ambulances there. Um, we are told that the young girl that we had seen earlier was at the front of the line. We're going to try to get a look at that again. But boarding that bus, we did clearly see uh, one child, some older women, and, and, and then men. Okay, let's see. We're going to see those pictures again. Let's take a look at those pictures again. At the front of the line there, you saw a younger girl, an older woman. Here's a different vantage point there. A couple older women there. And now what appear to be a number of the Thai hostages there, 10 Thai hostages and one Filipino hostage, perhaps boarding this bus. That is the Rafa crossing. We can't be sure where that bus will go, but it's possible it will head not far. We're talking about a mere number of a, a small handful of kilometers south to the Karem Shalom crossing. And from there, it would enter Israel. They are in Egypt right now. This group of hostages there, apparently the Thai men, and also perhaps one Filipino hostage boarding that bus. Caitlin, where earlier we did see the first person to get on was that girl, that young girl that we saw, um, now free after 48 days in captivity. Um, what's next for this bus? We are not sure, but within the next several hours, all of those people, we presume, will be back inside Israel. Yeah, we believe this, the next stop for that bus is going to be here in Israel, where there's a number of hospitals that are preparing to receive them. Uh, I mean, they are this reintegration process that, that these hostages are going to have to go through isn't just about their physical well-being, these medical checkups, but also a meeting with, with therapists and officials here to, to talk about what they've seen, what they've experienced in these 48 days. 
that they have been held. These people have not known freedom since October the 7th, since they were kidnapped by Hamas into Gaza, where we know from at least two of the hostages who were previously released, they were in a complex tunnel system underground. And they had been underground for so long that when they were released, John, light, natural light, sunlight shocked them because they just hadn't seen it in so long. And so that's the kind of mindset that so many of these these people that you're seeing now have gone through where, I mean, there are major questions about what else those conditions looked like, but we do know what we've heard from other hostages who have been released. One thing that we were told is as soon as these hostages, the Israeli hostages at least made it to the border, they were going to try to facilitate a phone call with their family members. They weren't able to immediately be reunited with them, but they at least wanted them to have that moment, to have that first conversation with a loved one that they have not been able to have for so long. And it's just a huge sigh of relief for so many of these families to see this actually unfolding and obviously still waiting for them to actually get here into Israel. One of the places that we do expect the hostages to go soon, and that's the Hatzarim Air Base. You can see inside Israel. So Rafa here and then presumably they'll move somewhere back into Israel, either crossing here or here, and then travel to the Hatsarim Air Base. That's where our Matthew Chance is with the latest on what you're seeing. Matthew. Uh, that's right, John. Here at the Hatsarim Air Base, preparations have been underway for some time uh, to cater for this arrival, uh, this first stop in the arrival of these 13 Israeli hostages, perhaps the, the nationals from Thailand and the Philippines as well, though it's unclear whether they'll be coming directly here as well. We're trying to get clarification on that. Uh, but yes, it's uh, going to be a sensitive operation. You, you saw those people heading towards the bus in the, in the live video that we've been watching. And um, our understanding, according to Israeli military officials on the ground here at the air base that have been speaking to us, uh, are saying that the, 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 the plan at the moment is for these hostages to be driven, these freed hostages to be driven by road uh, in those bus, in buses um, to this air base. The reason they're doing that, they said, is because helicopter flights can be scary and they don't want to further traumatize anybody who hasn't been on a helicopter before. That's the reason they said they're going to drive them by road. And so we'll see how that develops. Obviously, this is a, a fast changing uh, situation on the ground and that plan could change. But whether they come here by bus or whether they're flown here in helicopters, um, this is the place where we understand they will be received by, a, a, you know, a get, get initial checkups. They'll be able to make phone calls to their family members. Uh, they'll be properly looked at medically and psychologically to assess what their immediate needs are, given food and drinks, a change of clothes if that's necessary as well. It's not clear whether you know, they're still in the same clothes, for instance, that they were in when they were abducted uh, so violently back on October the 7th. So they're going to be looked at here. There are also shower facilities, things like that. After that, they're going to be loaded onto helicopters and taken to various uh, hospitals around the country, particularly close to Tel Aviv, depending on what their exact medical needs are. Now, it, it, in terms of the timing on that, uh, once uh, the... Uh, the hostages, if they come by road, once they once they get to the border of Israel, it's going to take about an hour because it's about 30 miles away, a bit bit longer than that, perhaps, uh, to, to the border, depending on where they come across uh, to this base. Um, and then they're going to be processed for between half an hour and two hours, depending on, you know, their, their specific needs. And so, you know, we're, we're you know, bracing ourselves for several hours now before these people sort of arrive here, are processed, and then finally board those helicopters that are waiting for them here and choppered uh, to, their, to the hospitals elsewhere in the country. But again, a very sensitive, delicate, anxious um, period uh, underway right now.